Hey everybody and welcome back to the Josh and Babe YouTube channel. I appreciate you tuning in. Today I want to talk barbecue, but I want to talk about what really is barbecue. Memorial Day weekend is upon us where we honor the brave men and women who have paid the ultimate sacrifice for our country and for our freedoms. Memorial Day is also the unofficial start to summer. As summertime approaches, many people are gonna be in the market for new grills. But what kind of cooker should you purchase? Well, before we can answer that question, we need to ask the question, what really is barbecue? And I think that means something different to different people. Whether you're a backyard barbecue amateur like myself, or whether you compete, whether you live on the west coast, in the middle of the country, on the east coast, what your budget is, what kind of cooker you want. There's so many different variables. So with this video, I just wanted to jump into what really is barbecue, what different people prefer in different parts of the country. And bear with me, you might be saying, Josh, this is a really long video. I promise you, the knowledge and the amount of expertise that I was able to gather from some of my friends is incredible. You are going to learn a lot, as I did. So in this video, I've reached out to a couple of my buddies from around the country. I tried to get somebody from the West Coast, somebody from Texas, a couple people from Texas, and uh, somebody from the East Coast. I wanted to get their opinion on four very important questions. These are guys who love to cook. These are guys that have been around a barbecue, been around a pit for a long, long time, and I posed these four questions to them. What really is barbecue? Do you prefer real wood, charcoal, a pellet smoker like a Traeger, or a gas grill. If you had $500 or less, what cooker would you buy for an all-around, well-rounded, amateur, backyard, cooking kind of guy like myself? And then I also asked, if money was no object and you could have any grill you want to make whatever you want, what would you buy? First person we're gonna hear from is Greg from Ballistic Barbecue. He has an awesome YouTube channel. He lives here in California like Babe and I do, and he has a wealth of experience barbecuing, cooking all kinds of different stuff on all kinds of different cookers. Very successful YouTube channel. Very, very intelligent man. Without further ado, let's hear what Greg has to say about barbecue. Hey, Greg here from Ballistic Barbecue, and first of all, a big thank you to Josh and Babe for allowing me to be part of their video. It's an honor, so thank you guys, I appreciate that. What really is barbecue? And I've been thinking about this question, and had I been asked eight or nine years ago, the answer would have been without hesitation, barbecue is cooking for a very long period of time at very low temperatures. And times have changed, where we used to, you know, the norm was 225 to 240, then it went up to 250, then people were going crazy because we were cooking at 275, now we're cooking at 400 degrees, a brisket, for five hours. And eight, nine years ago, that would have been unheard of. But thanks to the guys out there on the competitive circuit, you know, philosophies have changed. Personally, I still like that 250 degree mark. Um, but I guess the answer, what is barbecue? It's not grilling. So if you're cooking a cut of meat for hours to break down, um, you know, they say break down the the collagen and turn it into gelatin to tenderize it and get that nice smoky flavor, that's barbecue. That's barbecue to me. Um, a lot, quite often you'll hear people out there cooking hamburgers and they're calling that barbecue. That's grilling, that's not barbecue. Cooking a brisket for you know, anywhere from say five to 16 hours is barbecue. Real wood, charcoal, pellet smoker or gas, pretty much in that order. <laughs> um, my favorite cooking fuel is wood. I think, you know, just a natural split, you get a much better flavor. So if I'm doing barbecue, I want to cook on wood. Uh, next is going to be charcoal. I think lump, definitely over briquettes, again, for barbecue. And pellet, pellets are great. They've come a long way. And back in the day, again, I was pretty much a snob. If, if you weren't cooking with sticks, then you weren't barbecuing. But my mind has changed since I now own pellet cookers and all these other cookers, you know, um, have proven to me that you can get good food off of all of these fuels. Uh, gas, definitely for me, it's at the bottom of the ladder as far as my choices of fuels. And it took me years to accept that there is a place in my backyard for a gas grill. For me, gas is just, it would be a convenience thing. And I own two gassers and I very rarely use them, but I'm not as snobby as I used to be. I'm looking at my gas grills right now. <laughs> I'm not as snobby as I used to be about gas. Um, pellets, I think pellets have come a long way. And a lot of people call pellet cookers an oven. Well, I can see that because you don't have to manipulate dampers or anything, but 
really the way a pellet cooker is working is, you know, that igniter lights the pellets, which are made of 100% natural wood, and then an auger is just feeding the fire because that's a natural burning fire. So I think pellet cookers are great. I don't think you get the same amount of uh, smoky flavor that you do from real splits of wood. And I think that's just simply due to the fact that there's not as much, you know, sap in a pellet. That's me, I'm not a scientist, but that's just my feeling. But uh, overall, my whole philosophy about outdoor cookers is if it's getting you outdoors cooking, it's a good thing. And I think that's awesome. And one of the things that, you know, I've noticed with the pellet cookers is so many people who probably have no desire to get into the whole offset cooking and, you know, uh, controlling the temps. They're out there cooking now and they're making good food for their friends and family. And so I am all for that. I think it's a great thing. $500 or less, what is the most well-rounded cooker you would purchase? So reading this question, I know for a fact what Justin of Baby Back Maniac's answer is. And his answer is a good one. My answer is going to be, my budget's $500. I'm going to buy a pit barrel cooker for $300 delivered. And on that cooker, I'm going to be able to cook a bunch of ribs. I mean, eight racks of ribs. I can cook four chickens, whole turkeys, whole prime ribs, uh, things that a kettle won't do, you know, as far as that volume of food. And it's good food. It's, it's a very easy cooker. And then with the change I have left over from that $500, I'm going to buy a good old Weber kettle. And that's what I'm going to do all my grilling on. And you can still do low and slows on it if you want. But again, $500 budget, that's what I'm buying, two cookers. You can still grill with a pit barrel cooker, but a Weber, I think, is a better grill for you know grilling burgers and such. Uh, I think there's going to be some things coming down the pike from pit barrel that are going to be a game changer for them. But again, for me, it would be a pit barrel and a kettle for 500 bucks. Money, no object, what is the cooker you would purchase? And I, I, I am so much in love with my big Lone Star grills that offset vertical. Um, I think if money was no object, I'd just get a humongous offset stick burner with just all the bells and whistles. And when I say all bells and whistles, I don't mean fans and you know temperature control systems. I just mean uh, you know thick steel and a really beautiful finish on them. Maybe a cool ballistic barbecue logo on it, but just something that I could cook whole hogs on. That's what I'd want. Because for me, cooking on my Lone Stars, and I'm pointing at it right now, is it's just the experience of cooking on it is so satisfying for me, um, even more than eating the food that that thing produces. I just love watching it cook. I love watching that clear blue smoke coming up out of the stacks and hearing those logs crackle in that big fire box. I mean, it's just a very fun cooker. And uh, again, for me, part of the experience is, is controlling the temperature and feeding the flames, man, feeding in those big logs. I really appreciate the privilege of being on your video and uh, see you guys at the pit. Next, we're gonna hear from Justin from Baby Back Maniac, an awesome YouTube channel. Again, I'll link him below. Uh, very experienced when it comes to barbecue, lives in Texas, and here's what he has to say. Take it away, Justin. Hey guys, this is Justin from Baby Back Maniac. Thank you for letting me be on your show. Josh and babe, Josh, dude, congratulations on the weight loss. You, you guys may have to rename your show Babe and Babe, you know? And it must be nice to know that if YouTube doesn't work, you have that career as an underwear model waiting on you. What is barbecue? Um, I'm gonna butcher this quote, but I think it was Anthony Bourdain that said the road to world peace starts with barbecue. I think, I think he was half right. I think it like, I think it's world peace and YouTube or the internet or social media or whatever. I think the ability to that we have these days to see how other people live and realize we're all alike. Like I think there's, I think that's what barbecue is about. Sitting down over a fire and grilling protein and making memories with your family, watching your kids grow up. Just those experiences. To me, that that's what barbecue is. It doesn't matter what you cook on or if it comes off a offset stick burner. 
I think you're asking me what my preference is, and I guess my preference is, is charcoal or wood. Actually, my preference is wood, but I don't always have time for that. So I cook on charcoal more than anything else, but to me, it really doesn't matter. Whatever gets you outside cooking and making memories with your family and, and enjoying each other's company, to me, that's what barbecue's about. I don't care if you cook it with a magnifying glass, just get out and cook, you know? For under $500, the only correct answer to this question is the Weber kettle. And if anyone disagrees with me, I will fight them. Except Greg, he's got a lot of guns. Unlimited budget, what's my dream grill? You know, truthfully, like this guy right here is, is my dream grill. It's a 24 by 48 Lone Star Grills offset and it's ex exactly what, they sent me exactly what I wanted for my channel. Thank you, Lone Star Grills, I love you guys. Um, yeah, I I don't think there's much I would, ch I, may, I might put it on a trailer, but I can't have a trailer pit here because I'll get thrown in HOA jail and so I'd have to move and that would get expensive. But you did say money is no object. So yes, I would take that pit, I would put it on a trailer and I would move to a house in a different HOA and live free of fear of being terrorized by the H HOA committee, the, the whatever they call themselves. <laughs> They're strict. Guys, thank you so much for letting me be on your channel. I really enjoyed this. Hopefully we can do it again sometime. I can't wait to see what the other guys say. You know, if they disagree with me, they're, they're, they're liars, so. Now this will be a fun video. Thanks for including me. I really appreciate it. Oh, and good luck with your underwear model career. Next, we're gonna hear from Brother T-Roy of T-Roy Cooks, another outstanding YouTube channel, um, just a wealth of knowledge, always willing to go out of his way to help people, been doing YouTube for a long time, cooking for a long time. Again, another uh, Texas man, and uh, T-Roy, take it away. Hey, Josh, man, I appreciate you having me on here, brother. It's a real honor, man, it really is. Uh, let's see, as far as what is barbecue, in my mind, when I hear the word barbecue, I think of food and I think of that smoke smell. So in my opinion, barbecue is low and slow smoked meat, like brisket, pork butt, ribs, sausages, stuff like that, you know? And also, that smell. Love that smell, man, with that real wood burning. That's barbecue. All right, now when it comes to cookers, I'd say it depends on how much time you have to invest in watching your cooker. You know, if, if you are a busy person, you don't have time to man a cooker, pellet cooker. That'd be your best bet. You just plug it in, turn it on, fill it with pellets, load up the meat, set the temp, and you're good to go. It won't produce the best flavor, though, but it will cook your food and give you a hint of smoke. The best all-around cooker, I would say, is going to be your Weber kettle because you can do, you know, hot and fast. You can sear stuff on it. You can cook indirect and do low and slow. So it's an all-around cooker. If you can't afford a, a real offset stick burner, the next best option for flavor, in my opinion, for the flavor of your meat, would be the Weber Smoky Mountain. So I would, I would go with the Weber Smoky Mountain. It's almost a set and forget it, but you still every once in a while, as those charcoals burn, you may have to tweak the uh, vents on the bottom just a little bit on the Weber Smoky Mountain. So it's not totally set it and forget it. And neither is the Weber Kettle. But both the kettle and the Weber Smoky Mountain pretty much set it and forget it. And if you just wanted to sit outside and relax and have that nice aroma of smoke wafting through the air all around you, get you a stick burner. Get you a real offset wood burning cooker, all right, smoker. It'll take a lot more work. You gotta have a lot more patience and you really have to man that fire to keep it at you know regulated temp and to always check it, you know, check your meat every so often, spritz the meat, all that good stuff. But I love that kind of cooking. My absolute favorite and the best flavor that I've ever tasted as far as barbecue is from a stick burner, a wood burning offset smoker. All right, so for $500 or less, I'd say if you're gonna be cooking more than smoking, get the Weber kettle. It's the best all around cooker that's out there in my opinion. The next best option, if you're smoking more than grilling, I'd say get your Weber Smoky Mountain. Again, it's the best for the money smoker that's out there. Now we'll say on the Weber Smoky Mountain, you can take that midsection out, put your grill grate directly over the charcoal in the bottom, and you can grill steaks. I've done it on video before. You can sear stuff, cook you a pizza if you want in there. So don't think of the Weber Smoky Mountain as just a smoker. But as far as uh, smoking meat, it does have a better smoke flavor than Weber Kettle. Another great question, Josh. Man, if I had all the money in the world and I could choose any pit that I wanted, 
I honestly would pick a Lone Star Grills 24 by 48 inch smoker with a, uh, a side cabinet on it. All right, that would be my ultimate. You know, of course I'd have my name on it and everything else, but that basic smoker that that would be what I would want. You know, not on wheels, just something I can have in my backyard. So when I throw a pool party or something, you know, when when you and CJ come over and visit, uh, along with Baby Back and Brother James and you know everybody else that's out there. Yep, we can have us a nice party. <laughs> All right, guy, I appreciate you having me on here, Josh. And uh, man, give a babe a big old hug from uh, T Roy here. And I uh, hope to meet y'all soon, man. I really do. Thanks again. We'll see y'all later. T Roy out. Last guy from Texas, Bill from Chicken Fried Barbecue. Check out his YouTube channel. Bill, give us a couple words about barbecue. Josh, babe, what is barbecue? When you ask me down here in Texas, when I hear the word barbecue, I think of brisket. Brisket is king here in Texas. In the competitions, it's weighted higher than any of the other meats. So uh, if you get a first place brisket, somebody else gets a first place pork rib or chicken, brisket trumps the other meats. So for us, it's all about brisket. And when we hear the word barbecue or I hear the word barbecue, I'm not thinking hot dog on a gas grill. Thanks for uh, inviting me in. Can't wait to see the video come out. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Chicken fry, out. And lastly, we're gonna hear from Matthew from Hungry Hussy, another YouTuber, really, really good cook. He does a lot of Blackstone recipes on his YouTube channel. However, behind the scenes, does a lot of barbecue, lives over on the East Coast. And I'm trying to give you guys the comparison from California to Texas to the East Coast and what different people have to say, different experience levels, so on and so forth. So Matt, take it away. Hey, what's up everybody? Hungry Hussy here. First want to say thanks to Josh uh, for inviting me to do this. I really do appreciate it. I'm humbled. Uh, so thanks, Josh. What is barbecue? For me, barbecue, I'm from Lexington, North Carolina. Um, for barbecue, we do uh, what's called a pit, like an open style pit. We've got a burn barrel. We burn hickory and we also burn um, oak, oak and hickory. You just keep, that, keep those coals going. You take a shovel, shovel those coals, and you lightly feather those coals under that pit. And then for Lexington, North Carolina, we, we, we normally do shoulders, whole shoulders, not, not just a butt, but it's the whole shoulder plus the picnic. So that to me is barbecue. You're cooking under a, a live fire uh, and you got some kind of pork product on there. Come from North Carolina, we do pork. That's barbecue for me. Along with the barbecue, uh, what we like to put on it is, it's called a dip. It's a, it's a ketchup style base. This is Lexington, North Carolina. They do vinegar over on the East Coast. Uh, but it's real thin. It's a, it's a vinegary with a little bit of ketchup. It's got some pepper in it, red pepper, got some black pepper. Uh, sometimes people put a little sugar in it. But that's typically a barbecue for us. For $500 or less, uh, what kind of cooker would I uh, recommend? Uh, the most well-rounded cooker. I like Kamado cookers. Um, $500 ain't gonna get you a whole lot. Uh, I would recommend some kind of used or even like the acorn style. Uh, the reason why I think they're well-rounded is you can do low and slows. Once you kind of set them, they're kind of good. You don't really have to play with it. You don't have to add much to them. As far as charcoal, lump charcoal, you can do low and slows. You can cook steaks, chicken, you know, whatever. You can do like a raised setup. Uh, and if you want to go nuclear for a pizza, uh, you can do that 700, 800 degrees. A Kamado is perfect for that. So for me, uh, I like a Kamado style cooker. Uh, I cook on big green eggs and also have a Kamado Joe Jr. Uh, I, I just like them. So the next question is uh, what I recommend, real wood, uh, charcoal pellets, uh, that kind of thing. I'm partial to lump charcoal, rockwood charcoal uh, out of uh, Missouri, St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, it's, it's just charred, it's carbonized, it's carbonized wood. That's all it is. Um, I'm not a fan of pellets. Uh, I just, you know, you, you have every one of these pellets and I have no idea what's in that pellet. How much is that? Some other kind of wood or whatever it is or fillers or something like that. Um, I'm just not a fan of it. And I don't really care for briquettes either. Um, they just, they put off a smell. They got all kinds of fillers in there. I just like 100% natural 
lump charcoal. That's what I use. That's what I use in my on all my Kamados. So if money was no object, what cooker would I get? I would get a gravity fed uh, vertical smoker. They're very similar to a, a big green egg, to a Kamado. They're very efficient cookers. They have the capacity to do a lot. Um, you can put a lot in those briskets, chicken, whatever. That's the one downfall of the Kamados is just space. You just don't have a lot of space. If you wanna do a big cook for a big event, um, I'd love to have one of those gravity fed smokers. Uh, I think there's a few of them. There's assassin, there's deep south smokers around in my area. I've been eyeing those things for a long time, but man, they're pricey. So that's what I would do uh, if I if money was no object. And I got to keep all my others too, so obviously. So that's it. Uh, guys, I appreciate it. Gave you some knowledge of, of what we do here in North Carolina and some just some personal opinion. Again, I want to thank Josh for allowing me to do this. Uh, thanks, Josh. Till next time, folks. Hungry Hussies out. Guys, thank you so much for coming along on this little journey with me. I learned so much putting out this video, talking to all these guys. The combined views of all these great dudes cooking, their knowledge, millions and millions of views. So it's really, really awesome, and I'm really, really honored and humbled that they would take the time out to film some stuff for me to use on our channel so that we could really amplify the message and get people outside cooking. When Babe and I started our YouTube journey and really diving into barbecue and into cooking and stuff like that about a year and a half ago, um, we talked to a lot of people. We ended up going with a Blackstone griddle, or Weber kettle, cast iron skillet, and we're able to do just a ton of stuff. And I look forward to as my experience increases, and as my knowledge increases, and my skill increases, to get new and improved grills, toys, just having fun, uh, making videos, and I, I really appreciate you guys watching. With that being said, I hope everybody has a really, really awesome Memorial Day weekend. Remember what this weekend represents and who we're honoring, and I hope that everybody just has good weather. I hope that you're outside. I hope that you're grilling. I hope that when you're walking through the store looking at different grills that this video provided you some knowledge and some information and just made you think a little bit about all the different things you could do, how much fun barbecue really is. If you like this video or if you want to add to the conversation, if you're a barbecue person, I would love to hear your knowledge, your experience, and gain some wisdom from you in the comments below. Thank you guys so much, and we'll see you on the next one. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country.